In the year 1560, Scotland underwent the Reformation. Now, what this means is we stopped being a Catholic country and started to be a Protestant country. But here in Scotland, we have got a different form of Protestantism to England. So in England, they've got something called Anglicanism, whereas in Scotland, we've got something called Presbyterianism. Now, there are different sides of the, the same Protestant coin, except that the Scottish side, well, it's, it's a little bit more dour. You know, it's... Uh, it's that little bit more miserable. It's a little bit more Scottish. And ever since the Union of the Crowns in the year 1603, this is the moment when Queen Elizabeth dies in England without an heir and James VI of Scotland inherits the throne of England becoming James I of England. Ever since that moment, James, and in particular his son Charles, they became obsessed with trying to make Scotland have the same religion as England. But they could never get Anglicanism or Episcopalianism to take off here in Scotland. It was always fiercely, fiercely resisted. And that's because if there's one thing that us Scottish people will defend until our last dying moments, until our last breath, it is our God-given right to be completely and utterly fucking miserable. All right? That's what Braveheart was really about, folks. And why does it matter what type of Protestant you are, right? But what you've got to remember, folks, is in England, they love the monarchy. They love them. English people love the Queen. They have her face on plates and on mugs and on tea towels. Basically, anything that we would put a picture of a Highland cow on, they have the Queen on. And this is important because when the English went through their Reformation, essentially all they did was, imagine if you were to just replace the Pope with the Queen, right? Now, Admittedly, somewhere a Rangers fan's head's just exploded, right? But bear with me. Within the Anglican Church, what happens is the monarchy, they appoint all of the bishops and archbishops, all the kind of hierarchy. So the monarch exerts complete control over the church. Whereas in the Scottish Presbyterian Church, we don't have that royal middleman. Only God can tell you what to do. And Charles, he didn't particularly like being cut out of the Scottish Church. And all of his religious policies were designed purely to annoy Scottish people. He turned up for a Scottish coronation eight years after his English coronation, despite the fact he was actually born here in Scotland. Not that Charles knew much about his country of birth, you know, and growing up in England, not caring about Scotland and being shite, because believe me, Charles I was shite. These are all qualities that really should have got him a call up to the Scotland squad. But what he would do is like, so on his coronation, he had English bishops wearing Anglican robes. He then introduced an English Anglican prayer book to Scotland. There's sort of inane shit that just drives people mental. It's like how Tesco's put Union Jacks on all of their Scottish produce. They're one Union Jack and a shortbread tin away from rebellion here in Scotland, folks. And so things came to a head here in Greyfriars Kirkyard in February 1638, where a national covenant was signed. Now the covenant, that was essentially a defence of Presbyterianism in Scotland. It said that the king was not to interfere with the religion of Scotland and he was not to interfere with Scottish parliaments. And despite its moderate tone and its reasonable demands, it was essentially a declaration of war against Charles I. And it sparked civil war here in Scotland because what followed was the Bishop Wars of 1639 and 1640. And they showed Charles I to be an opponent easier to defeat than, well, Partick Thistle because the Presbyterian Covenanters they won the Bishop Wars easily and that's actually marked by Rangers fans now as the first of their 150,000 league titles or however many they claim to be up to now do you know what I mean I lose count to be fair and listen obviously I'm joking Rangers fans right before you start shouting we are the people or sending me letters right okay obviously it's a joke do you know what I mean the suggestion that a group of football supporters in the 21st century would still desperately cling to a decisive victory in battle that they had over 300 years ago. I mean, that's, that's just ridiculous, right? That can only be a joke. That, there's no way that's a real thing in 21st century Scotland, right? 